Griffin's got it. Unbelievable. Episode six of Lil and Ben, and it's been a big few days for my co-host Lily Mithen, not because of the footy, but because of a little bit of fame that started on social media. It ended up in the age. You look exactly like Australian Open runner-up Jennifer Brady. Can you talk us through what, do you mean? what I has am. happened? I'm just Jennifer Brady. Well, That's we who tried I am. to get Jennifer Brady on the podcast. We tried to get her here. Um, she rejected my offer, which is very fair enough. But I'm not. I'm not disheartened. She replied to my Instagram story. She reached out. She was like, oh, my goodness, this is – is this happening? She was – she thought the resemblance was just as strong as what I did, which I was pretty impressed about. Mind you, this is the day after she's played in the women's Oz Open final. And unfortunately so, went down. So un- Yeah, she went down. I still sent my congratulations and yeah. said apologies on the result, you know, shame to see you lose, but amazing. Can't wait to follow your career. I was really fangirling. She didn't reply to my request to come on the podcast where I sent her a follow-up one, which was approved by a few people. I was like, she's, she could be like the next best thing that's ever happened. And if I miss my moment. No, you wanted to go for it. Yeah. So I did double message, which a bit embarrassing, but. Can you like delete one? I could delete it, but I'm still, I'm not that ashamed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe this time next year we'll get her back when she's well. At that's the what Open. that's that's what I that was what the second message was. It was like obviously too short a notice this year. Next year you'll be back out for the AO. Like let's could, tee it up. Could be a she potential. She liked it. Did she? Oh, that's all right. She liked it. So I feel like that's a pretty good start. A potential number one ticket holder for Melbourne AFLW. Well, yeah, I was really keen because I sold it to her. I was like, come on the podcast, do the MCG, get you some merch. Like number one fan, left me on red. Right. Yeah. But how, how many? I'm surprised that she responded genuinely because well, no, she no. did play the night before. Well, because when I posted that initial photo of me in the visor and the um, pale blue top, I was like, this is so good. And I went to tag her. I was like, I'm not going to tag her. She's currently playing in a like Grand Slam. She's going to have however many thousand people in the stand watching her, tagging her. Like, she's not going to re- just reply to a tagged post because God knows how many tag posts she would have had on the night. And I was like, no, nah, won't do it, won't do it. Then my tweet went viral. Yeah, 544 and, likes. And Big. lots of people retweeting being like in like different languages being like, this American soccer player looks so much like <laughs> <laughs> like Jen Brady, this is crazy. And I was like, not Jen Brady, but anyway. Um, and then people were like, sorry for your loss. And I was like, I didn't play, <laughs> like wrong you person. Anyway, but because I was like, no, nah, she could have got wind of this. And then it was in the paper. And I was like, if she's sitting here on Sunday morning, having a coffee, reads the paper. I was like, maybe I'm Chance. Yeah. So I tagged her. She replied. Unbelievable. Amazing. It's a great Amazing. story. Amazing. We're best friends. I look forward to bringing that up with her on this <laughs> podcast this time next year. Next year. Hopefully months. after she's won the Australian Open. Yes, this one is better. true. I've actually penciled in my diary, like follow up Jen Brady <laughs> for like <laughs> Se- 11 Sarah and a half Minder months from now. <laughs> that is brilliant. Yep. Quick one before we introduce our guest who we told to be quiet, but she's laughing away on Zoom here <laughs> and she can't help but talk. We got to talk quickly about the game on the weekend. What I want to bring up is one of the Bulldog stars, Izzy Huntington. I pulled up behind her in the car park as we arrived at the game. Great Bulldogs player. Had a Melbourne sticker on her number plate. <laughs> what do you think could possibly be going on there? I love Izzy. Izzy and I are great mates. That is very funny. I I have never noticed that sticker. Um, massive Demons fan. Is she? Yep, well, her da- that well, makes sense. Yeah, her dad um, texts me every year when he gets his membership because he always pays like the extra $10 to get my photo on his membership card. Um, but, yeah, she loves the Ds. She loves the men's. Yeah. She's got a soft, soft spot for the women's, but I think she's pretty tied into the um, to the dogs, you're which a, is unfortunate. You're a Richmond supporter, but if you're going to a Richmond game and you had a Richmond sticker on your number plate, yeah, would you take I it don't off? Know, I don't know if, like, surely she's just had a bit of a glitch yeah. and forgotten about that. And didn't think she I'm, I'm going to text her about that. Yeah. I'll find out. I'll let you know next podcast. Great. Yeah. Follow up there. <laughs> We're going to introduce our guest. We've got Crystal Petrovsky. Unfortunately, she's back in WA, but she released one of the great Indigenous Guernseys we've probably ever seen last night. KP, thanks for joining us. Hey, Ben. Hey, Lou. Hello, Hello KP. I miss That's... you guys already. I miss it's been you. Four days. It's been a long four days. Yeah. Miss the energy, long four miss days the vibe. Seeing and talking to you in person. I'm, well, I'm heartbroken here. You know, I actually I, anxiety. I don't know if I'm missing you that much because your fa- face is just being plastered everywhere. Because Airtime as Ben said, KP. your Guernsey that you've designed is out of control. It's so cool. No, oh, that's. 
that's crazy. Still can't <laughs> believe that. Um, and I unfortunately like haven't really seen much on the media because I have shocking phone reception. So <laughs> not, not refreshing for me, my Instagram or Facebook. So um, I haven't actually seen my face on there at all. Um, <laughs> and not ideal for when you're about to do a Zoom. Yeah, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. So pray for some good phone reception for me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hopefully I will. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a long four days, Lou. I miss you so much. Yeah. Back on the jungle. But you guys are probably having that. You guys are probably having the time of your life, man. Like peace and quiet. Significantly oh, more no quiet in footy departments today. <laughs> KP, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that jumper. What was the honor like? I guess when the club came to you and said, "Can you actually design this for us?" Oh, it was massive, massive. Like honestly, I still can't. Like I'm saying, I still can't believe it to this day. Like. I'm a kid from the bush, from the middle of nowhere. And, like, when I just think about it, it's absolutely, like, nuts in such a good way. Like, I still can't believe it. Like, so grateful. Um, You know, I spin out on it. Oh, sorry, I don't know what word to use, but I spin out on it, like, every day. Like, I get to play at the Ds and I get to design our jumper um, for this year, for the first ever Indigenous round for AFL Women's. Um, yeah, honestly, like, no words can... Yeah, no words can actually describe the feeling. Um, for a person that talks a whole lot, you kind of left me speechless there. <laughs> there were some elements of the jumper I particularly liked. I liked the inclusion of Alicia Newman and the five uh, men's Indigenous players as well. You're obviously cousins with Toby Bedford. Neville Jeddah actually helped yeah. recruit you to the club. Um, do you feel yeah. really connected with some of those people? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, they... they they're really close to me and um I yeah, hold a special special they they yeah, very special um hold them especially in my heart. Yeah, very, very grateful for them. And um and yeah, with with the jumper obviously I wanted to acknowledge as many people as I could within the jumper because obviously they've played a major part in my journey, um, coming to Melbourne and and in Melbourne at the club. So um so yeah, it was really important to acknowledge them, um, and everyone I acknowledged on the jumper. KP, every every player at the club's got a symbol there. Can you can you pick out which one mine be? I want something pretty front and centre. Um, it's like maybe one of the bigger circles. I don't know if you can arrange that. But she actually gave me a little dot on season launch, so I'm claiming you've it. you've got one. I've got a dot. Yeah. Does everyone have a dot? <laughs> Does staff? I thought only players had a dot. I, I claimed one. Well, because you almost Ben, ben claimed it on. <laughs> you can, Lil, you can pick any Lil, You can pick any one you want, but you know that's you gotta have that argument with the twenty nine other girls there in the chain oh, room. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll leave that up for you guys to to deal with. <laughs> well, because when you were giving Daisy a dot at the season launch, when you presented the jumper to us, one of the great speeches. One of the great speeches where KP came up and smashed it. Yeah. Um, everyone should have for been there. Forty five minutes. Unfortunately, no one could be there because of COVID. Um, but you almost just wiped Daisy. You were like, oh, yeah, this is for the retired players. players. Um, Daisy, you're over here. And then Daisy's like, well, hold on. I'm still your captain. I'm about to l lead us out in season 2021. And here you are saying that Daisy's got the retired dot over here. Walk us through that. Uh, I swear, I swear I did not mean it in that way. I swear to God. No way we want Daisy to retire anytime soon. No way. We love it a bit and we don't want it to go anywhere. Um, so I definitely didn't say it like that. Um, I must have just, you know, spoke too quickly and it all just got jumbled up. But I was actually saying, um, yeah, I think that, that that's what happened, to be honest. I think a little too quickly um, and then everything just got mushed together and... <laughs> I did not mean to say that at all, I swear. No, nah, nah, that doesn't sound like you at all. Talking too <laughs> Talking fast. Talking too much. No, nah, what? Unfortunately, KP, you won't be here to wear it this weekend, but watching it on TV, seeing the girls in it, you must be pretty excited for that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's going to be a very, very special one. Um, and, like, um, I am injured, unfortunately, so I would definitely will be ruled out and won't be able to play. But even then, like, I didn't know that I would be playing even in this year's Indigenous role as, as well, because obviously, you know, you do get, the team gets selected each week. And, um, and yeah, I don't know if I'd be playing or not, to be honest. So um, I didn't prep for anything further than that because I thought, obviously, you know, I've got to earn my respect and then earn the spot in the team to play. So, um, so you hadn't thought too past that. But, yeah, obviously, I am injured and now I'm definitely ruled out for the game. Um, but, yeah, no way, no way will it take away the specialness of it and the significance of it. Obviously, I'm going to be so, so excited and, absolutely speechless and yeah probably might shed a few tears they're watching 
watching my beloved teammates run out in it because I know they would be wearing it proud and with so much love, the same amount of love and pride that I was, I did have with designing it. So so yeah, um, so yeah, definitely won't be missing out at all to be honest. Um, and yeah, can't wait. You are out at the moment with that hammy. How is that going in a little caravan in quarantine? <laughs> the hammy is actually going, um, yeah, really well, actually. I ran for the second time on Saturday prior to leaving. So I did actually a 4K session, which is an absolute milestone considering, well, I think I shouldn't even be walking at this stage. Um, so baby steps and definitely celebrating the wins that I'm, that I'm having. Um, with the injury but yeah you know I know I'm in the best hands and I've got the best support around me so I'm just going going with whatever they say you know they're telling the story and I'm just flipping the pages um <laughs> but yeah um it's gone gone well and I'm very very lucky with the um with the circumstances I'm in so I get to quarantine at home um obviously away from my family still but I do have access so my quarantine area it's, it's kind of it's a, it's a funky one like so I have a caravan <laughs> that I sleep in and then I have an outside access shower and toilet. And then I also have access to my home home gym. So that's all the current stuff. Like that's all blocked off with fences around it. It's seriously like I'm in a little prison. Not going to lie. Oh um, <laughs> that's all blocked off just for me, um, which is very, very lucky. In the Royalty. sense that I can still run on a treadmill and do all my rehab stuff. So I won't be missing out on much when I return. Can you give us a little tour? I mean, I can give you a tour of my caravan because it's the only place that has phone reception. But if I go outside, it might cut out. But that's literally... Oh, yeah? That's pretty good. And then this is this is a kitchen and that's, yeah. What do you mean, what do you mean whipping up in that kitchen? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> the water doesn't even work in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we've got to do what you got, you know. No complaints around here. Got an aircon as well, so... Bloody stoked about that. <laughs> <laughs> did you um did the bucket hat come over with you? That's been a new feature to your wardrobe at the moment. Absolutely little rock. Oh man, I love the bucket hat. Seriously, everyone should invest in getting one. It's the best best investment ever. So even I want to see you. I want to see you in one. Um, right. No, I didn't. It didn't make the trip because yeah, I didn't want to lose it along the way. I thought <laughs> you know too precious. Need that. They leave that up in the cupboard there. Sit wait for my return. <laughs> Can you tell us about your trip? Getting home is a bit of a mission. Can you walk us through the steps? Yeah. Melbourne, Melbourne to Halls Creek. So obviously it's a bit of a mission without the whole coronavirus involved. Um, but with Corona, it's just a whole nother, whole nother level crazy. Um, so obviously the hard borders in Western Australia, um, yeah, very, very hard to get into. And um, I was very, very lucky, very, very lucky in the end. Got it. Got approved to come back under moderate um, quarantine exemption. So yeah, very lucky and so thankful to everyone who helped me, help me get here where I am today. Um, but yeah, so obviously I had to catch catch three flights. Um, so I left Melbourne at like five o'clock in the morning, flew to Brisbane. Um, and obviously, so Brisbane still their borders are locked to Victoria as well. So getting to <laughs> Brisbane, I had to go hold through the whole health screening through the whole um police check and everything like that i wasn't even allowed to leave the airport or anything um so that was very scary literally like <laughs> i was so scared oh my god um you know, hold himself. waiting at the airport um yeah never experienced that before i'll tell you that now and that took like i mean i'll be landed in brisbane and my flight was in five minutes so having to get through all of that and jump on the flight like so lucky that i ended up because i thought i was going to miss my flight in the end um, and then ended up flying from Brisbane to Darwin. Got into Darwin, the same same circumstance. Obviously, I'm not allowed to leave the airport, not allowed to interact with anyone. Um, and my flight was obviously a transit flight. So I stayed at Darwin Airport for four hours, um, sitting in the airport for four hours, you know. Um, and for me, um, yeah, it was it was so hard to actually just yeah, sit there and do nothing. Um, but then, yeah, so once from Darwin, I then flew from Darwin to Kananara. So Kananara is the only, like, the the town with probably the biggest airport in the Kimberleys that can, other than Broome, that to, to get to the Kimberley region. Um, so yeah, flew to Kandara and the same process in Kandara, obviously had to do the whole, the um, go to the health screening, do the police check. Um, and then I had to, so Halls Creek is four hours from Kandara. So my quarantine address is in Halls Creek. Um, so obviously I had to, as soon as I left the airport, I had to jump straight in the car and drive all the way to Halls Creek without stopping at all. Um, and that's a four and a half, four and a half hour trip um 
so yeah by the by the end of it I was absolutely exhausted um and then the time difference didn't help me at all because then I was up at like 4 30 in the morning oh. couldn't go, couldn't go back to sleep because like eight o'clock in Melbourne um <laughs> so so yeah it was a it was a big trip um Thankfully, I got here safe and sound. Um, Sounds great for your recovery too. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a short break here and then get a very special guest on on the other side of this. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. Welcome back to Lil and Ben. Now, Lil, we are lucky to be joined by a very special guest, someone who's used to doing the talking on this side of the camera, but now we're going to be firing some questions at her. She's a media professional. She's also a teacher, but most importantly, a really important person in both the AFLW and Indigenous landscape, Shelley Ware. Shelley, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The big first question is, have you seen KP's Guernsey? What a design that is. I have. I love it. It's just amazing. I'm just so proud of it. KP, how long exactly did that take for you to put together? Yeah, so the jersey would have probably taken me about, overall the designing would have taken me about less than two weeks, um, but the whole process took about eight months uh, all up. So, the, yeah, putting it all together, then obviously the it coming to life on a jersey and then fixing errors on the jumper and then actually, yeah, producing the final 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 jumper took a bad year around about eight months I'd say overall. KP have you always been able to draw or is this is this a new talent that you've found somewhere along the line? Um I must say I'm not that much of a great drawer. Um oh, <laughs> I don't got know right about that. I got right I'll pump my ties up a little bit there. Um <laughs> but no, I've never had the patience to actually sit there and draw so to be honest little I couldn't tell you if I was a good drawer or not because I can I can't actually sit down to take time to do it. <laughs> that does not surprise me at all. What about you, Shelley? Have you ever got into the art landscape? Yeah, I'm actually an art teacher trained, so oh, wow. I love art. Yeah. I'm not a fantastic drawer as such, but um, I do all right for myself. There's now obviously, Shelley, an Indigenous Guernsey for every team this year. It must be something you're proud of. Uh, have you got a favourite? I do actually believe it is this one we're talking about. And it might be that I love it. I'm not sure. But no, I think it's pretty special. I love the meaning and the stories that are intertwined in this beautiful jumper. So, yeah, this one's my winner for me this year. And we didn't even tee you up to say that. The no. stories. The stories. <laughs> and I barrack for Carlton. There you go. Well, we're going to ask that. You barrack for Carlton, but you're joining a Melbourne podcast. Does that suggest that you've potentially got a second team? <laughs> Actually, it's funny because I'm really good friends with Nev um, Jetta as well. So I have had a soft spot for Melbourne for a long, long, long time. You do seem to just love your footy. You're quite vocal on Twitter. Are you, I guess, in a way, just a supporter of the whole association and all the clubs as opposed to just narrowing it down to one? So after 20 odd years in the media, that, that's bound to happen. I meet people and get to know who they are as individuals and it's just what happens. Sometimes I'm barracking for opposition teams and two people going for the same ball and it's just part of part of my life and I'm used to it and uh, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, you're clearly a massive supporter, but AFLW's first ever whole Indigenous round, what, is, what does that mean to you and what significance does that play? It means everything to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community, the AFL and the Australian community. You know, we, we're celebrating Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history and culture and um, it's just beautiful to do that. We're also celebrating Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who've made a contribution to the game for the first time in AFLW. So, so it's really special and I'm just so glad that this is happening this year. Well, it is a celebration. It's also a really good opportunity, I think, for a bit of education. Do you see that as an important side of it? Well, of course, especially as a teacher, but education is the key to to, you know, developing as a person, you know, learning about different people and different cultures. And, and the fact that we're highlighting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture in this round is an opportunity for people to take this time to self-educate and listen to the stories and the jumpers and listen to what people have got to say. And, and there's so much beauty within our culture and that's what people don't often focus on. And so this is a beautiful time to do this. And I'm glad that it's happening in the AFLW rounds and I'm, I'm glad that everybody's embracing it. So it, I'm really proud that this is happening in our space. 
the whole game has come a long way, obviously. We've now got pathways for Indigenous footballers and, and for women as well. I'm guessing when you started out as a junior, you wouldn't have had those opportunities. W- would you have liked to have had a crack on the field instead of just behind the camera? No. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Have you seen these wrists? <laughs> they're, not, they're, not, they're not for AFL. They were for netball and it was because nobody could run into me. <laughs> oh, like you would have been passionate at least, I'm sure. Passion would have, yeah. you know, the got you over the line. Got, the defending, I was good at that, Lily, but that's about it. Like, <laughs> if someone came for me, I would have ran, ran down the other end of the field. I would have been useless. <laughs> and we do have to ask you, do you have, other than KP, a, a favourite Indigenous player in the competition, someone that really catches your eye? Yeah, well, I love Maddie Presparkis. You know, she's just got everything. She's clearly been touching the ball since she was born and she brings a whole new level to the game. So it's really exciting to watch her play and the attack at the ball and and her passion, all those efforts that she's always putting into it. So she's really, um, really caught my eye and I, I love watching her play footy. Well, Shelley, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate your insight and I uh, hope you enjoy the first AFLW Indigenous round this weekend. Thank you. I hope you do too. Take care. Thanks, Shelley. Great to hear from Shelley. We're very exciting, as always, to chat to Crystal Petrevsky. We've got a big game this weekend, Lil. A test against an undefeated side, Collingwood, 310 Sunday. Looking forward to that one. Can't wait. Yeah, love playing at Vic Park. Really cool ground there. They're in serious form. So look forward to another great challenge. Bounce back. Great challenge in a great Guernsey. KP, looking forward to watching the girls run out in that one and we'll see you in about a week's time. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on the podcast. Really appreciate it. And thank you. Thanks for the questions. Um, Good luck this weekend, Lil. I can't wait to see you and all the girls out there wearing the jumper. Um, Yeah, going to be absolutely speechless and the biggest fan girl you'll ever have. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, thank you. Thanks, KP. Yeah, can't wait to wear it. On that note, the special word of the week the what do we use to call the it? keyword the keyword the keyword is guernsey very good well Very looking fitting. forward to seeing it out there this weekend